Right, so we've got a few running repairs to make. A few weeks ago, we were out with it, and I went to light the fridge. And within seconds, we could see smoke and smell something burning. So I quickly took the panels off the side here. And if you look, that piece of foam up there was smouldering. It's actually burnt a chunk of it away. Now, quite how that's happened is a bit of a mystery. Because that's where the gas burner is, right down there. So there is a flue that comes up here. But to be honest, I can't see anything obvious. Put that down. I'm wondering if there's a crack in that. It's either that or there was a bit of paper or something in the bottom there. Something's caught light and worked its way up, floated up. I don't know, but we're taking no chances with it. Not going to even attempt repairing this. What is it? This van's 2006. So what we've done, we've gone and bought an 80 litre compressor fridge. It is a little bit smaller than the one that's in it, you probably see. Well that was enough money as it was, so uh, if I'd have gone bigger I'd have been looking in the thousands. So yeah, we're going to rip that out, get rid of the gas side of things, and just run it on battery. I think what I'll do is cap this gas pipe off at this end, rather than cut it off at the tap end that's inside the van. That way if we ever decide we want a gas barbecue point. We've already got it running in there. Well, I'm guessing the fridge went in before they fitted the table, because there's no way that's coming past there. I think the easiest way will be for me to take that passenger seat out. Yeah, that looks like uh, the least problematic way. Well, the flue on it all looks intact. Doesn't look as though there's been any flames around there or anything. It looks as though this down the side's been uh, a bit on the warm side. Yeah, I think that's scrap. Unless anybody wants a fridge that runs on 12 volts and 240 and not gas. Right, let's get a new one in. So right, that's it, just about pretty much where I want it. Let me see, we've got a bit of a, a bit of a gap there. Let's see. We've got those burners there and everything. Just wondering whether I could get like a drawer of some description in here. And then we've got this side to make up. Just looking at the wiring that we've already got, there is a 12 volt supply uh, on two and a half mil cable behind the fridge already. Um, but it's permanently live, so what I'm doing, um, just putting a, uh, a 20 amp switch up here. It's not controlled by the control panel, so there's a good chance that I'm going to forget to switch it off. So if I've got a switch up here, that'll do the same job. Yeah, got a bloody big hole to fill in here. Well, we've got a light on, that's a start. See how cool it gets now. I don't know if you can hear it, but that's it running. Um, so once this is boxed in a bit round here, it should cut some of the noise down. It's not horrendous. Just need to fasten it. I didn't have any long enough screws to go through. It needs to be a bit longer than. I want to come through the other fridge and obviously I'm going to make box in this side just so I can fasten this side. So far so good. Well, over from by the bed, you can just hear it. So I don't think it's going to be horrendous. Oh, I better start clearing up this bloody mess I've made. We still have a 240 volt cable that powered 
the fridge went on hook up. So any of you electricians will know to get to live items you need to have to use either a key or a tool. There we are. All safe. Right, so we've been on about 15 minutes. We've got there. 12.9. Let's have a look in here. Feels cold. Minus 23, that can't be right, surely. It does feel bloody cold. That'll do me. No, I don't know if you can see, but we've still got the gas pipe there. Obviously that needs uh, sealing off. So what I've got, took the nut off the old fridge and you see that little brass insert basically that goes inside the nut you tighten it up and it seals it up so there we go nicely capped off so that's all safe if we accidentally switch the tap on at the manifold now I'm just looking at that vent I might have to block that one off there's going to be a hell of a gale coming through that one. Now there's nothing in front of it. There is still, probably just see the big one down at the bottom there, that will cool the fridge itself. Yeah. I think you can get, well, I think they call them winter screens or something, that you take the cover off the outside and put an insert in. I'll have to uh, look into getting one of them. We'll just duct tape it from the inside. I don't know what to do about this big hole. And down the side there. So that's the fridge in and running. Um, I left it running for about half an hour and it did get up to, well, drop down to about three degrees inside. So, you know, it seems to be working well enough. Uh, the make, it's an unbranded one. It come from the place where I buy all my trade consumables from. It was £435 plus the VAT. Now the 80 litre Dometic one, uh, if I remember, was close on 800 And if I had gone up to the 100 litre one to fill the gap fully, um, I think that was about £1,200. So, you know, we, we weren't going to spend that much money on it. I've left the gap down the left hand side of it, um, just for a bit of storage space, I think we've put things like trays and things down there. Um, it's just the top I'm a bit undecided with at the moment, whether I can make some kind of a drawer to go in there, or just put a door on it and make it a little cupboard. Um, I've not decided yet, but, uh, but we'll see how the fridge runs first before uh, we make any decisions on that. If any of you lot have got any ideas, just uh, drop them in the comments below. So, that's it for this video. Not quite sure what we're doing next or when the next video's going to come out. I have got a bit of footage which I need to edit and I'll bang that out soon as well. So, yeah, thanks for watching.